to hear the update from Paul about the seaport. Um, you know, it's a it's a very uh, strange time, so it's just nice to see some faces. And uh, I'm a real people person, and I really, uh, you know, wish I could be in person with you all uh, today. So this is always a weird format for me. I can't tell if anyone's laughing at my jokes or, you know, nodding their head or like, what is she talking about? So um, I'm just going to say with my 30 years of experience, I'm just going to trust in the process. <laughs> uh, so, you know, maybe some of you have heard me talk about stuff over the years. Um, so I'll either say it's very nice to see you again, or it's nice to see some new shining faces. So uh, again, I'm Angela Anderson, sustainability coordinator for Long Beach Township. And um, I am very pleased uh, to, to be here today. So the way I'm gonna kind of format the talk, I'm gonna talk about two different things and I'll kind of pause. I'll talk about the oyster recycling program and then sort of we can sort of land there and talk a little if there's specific questions, but of course ask along the way. And then we're gonna talk about a, a new and exciting project that Long Beach Township is, is working on in our Hullgate section of Long Beach Township. So, but very fluid. I'm happy to be interrupted if there's like a burning question or clarification or anything like that. So I'll just kind of move it along. Um, I'm gonna assume most of you are local, but you know, with the Zoom platform, you guys could be from anywhere. So I'd like to start just sort of with a, um, a sense of place. Uh, so, um, you know, in New Jersey, uh, you know, I'm gonna assume everybody's from New Jersey or in New Jersey right now, but I'm always uh, astounded when you kind of relook at New Jersey and realize how we're a peninsula. We are made of water primarily. We are such a diverse state, um, you know, um, so where I am sitting right now is in the Southern part of, ocean, of New Jersey in Ocean County. You see the Ocean County Barnegat Bay watershed there. Uh, and then we're right here, Long Beach Island, we're 18 miles. Um, Long Beach Township is one of the six towns on Long Beach Island. So I think a lot of people are kind of get, you know, so it's a lot of Long Beach going on in the description, but it's important to get that sense of place when you see the work that we're doing uh, and the complexities that are involved uh, being on an 18 mile island with six other towns. Long Beach Township is 12 non-contiguous miles of the, eight, of the 18. So you've got a, get through all the other towns in order to get to our sections. So when I start talking about our Marine Field Station, you'll see on the southern end of, we are in Little Egg Harbor Bay in our Holgate section of town. <clears throat> you know, and you see Manahawkin Bay sort of to the middle. And then we get up to Barnegat Bay. We are the Barnegat Bay watershed, but you know, a lot of the things we'll be talking about uh, are Little Egg Harbor. And I always like to make those distinctions because um, it is a, such a diverse bay. So, of course, you know, uh, you know where I would have been standing in Clam Town, or you know, if I was uh, talking with you guys right now and uh, tuckered in. But you know, we call our program the Oyster Shell Recycling Program, but we of course are collecting clams uh, and oysters. These beautiful uh, specimens of life are a hard shell, and they're an organic material that needs to be removed from the waste stream and they serve a critical role in the estuary ecosystem and the local economy. So as a municipality, so my place in, in kind of telling this piece of the story is as a municipality. So we look at it in a, maybe a slightly different way than some of our partners are looking at it from, you know, Stockton looking at the sciences um, of the reef itself and our growers um, and Dale, you know, with the, the oyster uh, larvae. So when you're coming from my lens and a municipal government, why is this important to us? Why are we even bothering with this? And by the end, I hope you'll all completely agree that every municipality and, and, and county government in New Jersey should be fully behind shell recovery. Shell recovery should be a Jersey thing. So we're just at least making it a Southern Ocean County thing um, at our very best. And we do see a lot of growth <laughs> at the state level. God bless you. <laughs> um, so shell recovery, getting organic material out of the waste stream, huge piece of why Mayor Mancini and Long Beach Township was interested in this. And of course, the ecological and economic piece that comes along with this. These shells do not deserve to be in the Ocean County landfill for the rest of their lives. We, we know there's a better place for them. Um, little bit of background too on why this story became something that I am centered to. 
um, is uh, I uh, was able to be the uh, producer and environmental consultant to the Oyster Farmers film. I would say raise your hand if you have seen it. Um, I know many of you have and um, yeah. So it debuted um, and it is a award winning film. Uh, it debuted at the Lighthouse International Film Festival in 2017. And you can see all the places you can uh, download it, buy it and watch it now. Um, but it's a film about the oyster resurgence in our Barnegat Bay, Little Egg Harbor region. Um, we captured just a moment in time, about 2015 to 2017, in a shift that was occurring in our, our ecosystem of um, this oyster resurgence, if you will. Um, and we'll get into, into that, but um, I can share, or Caitlin can share the Vimeo link. You can see the, the trailer, it's a three minute trailer. Um, but there, you know, there was, there's a lot of moving parts. You know, my work with the Oyster Farmers film my work with the town and Mayor Mancini's, you know, dedication uh, as a boy growing up here in this region. So we, we really had a trifecta of really good stuff that got us to the place that we're at right now. So um, this picture is sort of a dream, right? It's uh, the future of resource recovery. Um, and as a coastal community, you know, we want to see this material be treated as, as, as like gold, like all these other materials that shouldn't be sitting in the landfill. You know, New Jersey was a leader um, in, in the United States of America in recycling. We passed the first mandatory recycling law in 1987. We're becoming a leader in food waste reduction. Um, and, you know, we, we had a goal set in 2017 uh, to have a 50% in food reduction um, by the year 2030. Um, and then in 2019, we started seeing a suite of bills really focusing not just on sort of the tail end, but um, you know, in food insecure people in New Jersey is a huge problem. And so you have to look at food, the food we eat and where the, the waste in the production of it and where the waste after consumption of what we consume as a society. We, this material needs to be handled in a very sustainable way. And New Jersey has made strides even through this pandemic, um, you know, uh, you know, working through some of this stuff, uh, Senator Smith working on, on these um, issues. So I would love to see spent shells right next to any of this other stuff uh, being re recovered and be have a better life. So um, this slide looks a little wonky, but uh, it's not the way it's supposed to look. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but um, you know, that's par for the course, that's the way it goes. Um, so, you know, why, why oysters and why do we fall in love with oysters? And I know that there's lots of people here that could tell this story much better than me, but when you look at an oyster and an oyster reef, um, you know, what role do they play in our, our system? And why is it so important that these shells get back into the system? Um, you know, oyster reefs, if you think about them in your sort of your mind's eye, they're an architect in the water column. They grow upon each other and they kind of create like a 3D mass within the system when they're healthy and growing. Um, we always say they kind of grow on the back of their ancestors, you know, and that's what we'll get to talking about and see how we're kind of artificially helping this process along. Uh, not artificially, but like meaningfully, I should say. Um, they create habitat, not just for oysters, but all the other flora and fauna that our partners at Stockton um, study at great lengths. Um, they you know, promote biodiversity in the system and they're a storm surge protector. They serve so many roles uh, as, as like the reef system itself. And back in the day, there was many. And uh, it was sort of like the arc of the oyster farmers film was there were oysters and oyster reefs and there wasn't. And now there's gonna be again. It was a real simple story arc with a lot of meat to it. But the oyster itself, the, the itself individually uh, as, a, as a filtration system in, uh, the, the waterway, you know, we, we all have this abundance of this microscopic marine algae and it naturally just feeds upon that. So um, it's the oyster farmers that we have in the bay, like, it, you know, one of the quotes in the film, you know, it's not like another farmed animal where you need to add anything to, uh, you know, make this animal thrive. It's like, we just need to get them into the water because there already is an abundant amount of their food source there and the beneficial aspect of filtration. Um, but the culture, and that's sort of where I come from, is sort of the people part of this, because uh, I'll give you links to all the sciencey stuff um, for sure at the end. But people, we are, you know, uh, well, we 
we're really starving for it now, but the, the cultural side of buck a shuck and that community style food eating, like cr picking crabs, when you go out, you know, are you going to go out and get five dozen oysters yourself when you're out? No, you, you kind of go and you share that experience. So the oyster itself is, 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 re is relatable in a way like eating crabs with a crowd. And we have buck a shuck, we had buck a shuck and we will again, it became a real cultural phenomenon and how many oyster bars were opening up uh, in, in New, you know, just on Long Beach Island alone, if not in uh, New Jersey as a whole and New York and, and everywhere you would go. So there was a sort of a demand and supply and a supply and demand going there, but they're nutritionally packed. And we know right now more than ever, we need zinc and magnesium, right? So <laughs> these, these babies should help us with our, our um, immunity and things like that. So they're just a beautiful animal, um, you know, uh, inside and out. So, um, so the, the basic, very, very minimal amount of like kind of science that I would kind of give to this is, you know, you know, the science is that there's the terminology spat, which many of you might be familiar with, um, you know, but you, you can just see sort of this, this small couple week oyster life cycle, um, you know, as so you see the adult males, that would be sort of a clutch, uh, you know, of oysters and the egg and sperm goes into the water column and it's kind of looking around for something and it needs to set on a hard surface. And anyone kind of familiar with the bottom of our bay is it's much sandier. So making sure we have this substrate into the, into the bay to have sort of this, you know, you know wild spat to land on um, is, is super critical. And that's sort of the essence of it. It's sort of a simple concept, um, but they'll, they'll latch on and then they're staying there for life. And then that's where they're gonna keep growing and, um, you know, and uh, reproducing. So in thinking of shell recovery, it was a call to action that came out of uh, the film. During, watch it, if you watch the film, you'll see we, we featured a pilot project of shell recovery that was occurring um, it, at Old Causeway with the American Literal Society and Stockton University in a pilot study funded by the Barnegat Bay Partnership. Um, and it was like call to action, like we need to do this. Like the pilot project was proving that we can do this in South Jersey. So we looked around and we're like, you know, there's, there's shell recovery is not a new thing. These things are happening up and down the coast everywhere. And we looked at logos and we looked at what people were doing and why it was successful, where they were doing it, how they were doing it. Um, you know, after the Oyster Farmers film came out and Mayor Mancini wanted to dedicate resources uh, from us to, to help move this concept along, um, to take it out of the pilot project that the Barnegat Bay Partnership was funding to something a little bit um, bigger. Um, so like no shell left behind, you know, this again, I'll reiterate, like to, to manage this material and get it back into the bay. Again, the townships, you know, dedication to this comes from looking beyond traditional recyclables, you know, everything is place-based. Um, when you say food waste recovery, we're not going to have compost units in the backyards here on Long Beach Island. People just aren't going to do it. So when we, what, what role can we play in, in food waste recovery? Um, and this is it. You know, we have an abundance of shell coming out of our restaurants and raw bars and our consumers want this, you know, food source. So it became, we felt compelled that that was something that we needed to, to, to play a role in. And it helps connect the consumer to this bigger process that all these scientists and researchers and farmers and, and dedicated generational folks are doing. This just by eating something right here on LBI, you're contributing to this huge uh, thing. So, you know, there's, there's a built-in market for it. Like I know when I talk to Dale or anybody, they're like, you can't even pick up enough shell. Like we could use so much more shell, you know? Um, but I stay connected to the consumer. You know, they're gonna get a food source that's grown right here where they can see it. They're gonna eat it. And then they're gonna be able to, con you know, get it right back into the bay. Um, you know, so it's, it's an exciting thing that I want people to get more excited about that I, I know this is a hard time to be excited, but this is something that we can all kind of latch on to. Um, Cause the raw bars, I always, you know, cheap shot here, gotta get my kid. Uh, my oldest son is a shucker and he also works up on the oyster farms with Matt and Scott up in Barnegat Light. And he's wearing my Oyster Farmers Film t-shirt. So I always have to put this slide in just for self uh, promotion. But this is the picture of where we were up until this pandemic came. This is what people were sitting around a raw bar looking at. Where did these guys come from? Each of them, uh, you know, Bistro 14 where he works, they'll have seven or eight East and West Coast oysters. Each of them absolutely 
with a, a taste and a flavor, just like a wine um, grape, you know, they're just individual where they're grown, how they're grown, grown what they're eating, how fast they're grown. Uh, each shell, um, each cup, each piece of meat, each brine, completely individual, really made for a nice community eating. And then those shells deserved to keep telling a story. And um, that is what we want people to get excited about. And um, we, I feel 2021 is going to be our year. <laughs> for sure. So when we did the Oyster Farmers film, we started uh, in early 2015 um, doing some filming. And at the time it was just uh, Rose Cove and um, Parsons and Maxwell's that we were really kind of focusing on at the time when we first started early 2015. Um, this is not even a comprehensive list now that I'm looking at this slide, but just think for one minute, anybody that's lived here for a long time, um, how exciting it is that you can just turn your head and, and this is how many individual oyster farming businesses are happening in our bay right now. And each of these, they're part of um, everybody, most of them are part of the Barnegat Oyster Collective, which is sort of an umbrella of, um, from the folks at 40 North, Matt and Scott. Um, Tucker's Island, uh, Sloop, Laughing Gull, they're all part of that collective to really, you know, make sure that, you know, everybody's growing, everybody's getting their food to the people, right? Uh, Parsons, of course, and Maxwell's have been around for generations and they've each taken like their roles um, and really grown into the future. The younger generations are, are so forward thinking, Dale um, and Gretchen down at, at, you know, Maxwell's, it's, it's uh, awe inspiring to watch since we debuted the film in 2017 to today. Um, the direction that some of these fifth and sixth generation uh, families have taken this extraordinary business. So this slide alone is inspiring that we have a very large, uh, you know, collection of young people, men and women, wanting to invest, uh, you know, in a business in our bay um, to grow this beautiful product. So it's it's very inspiring, and the, and the list is growing. And it's going to cap out. It's not like, hey, we want every acre to be, you know, an oyster farm and this and that. But, um, you know, it's a it's a beautiful big bay uh, system, and um, there's a lot of great product coming out of here. Hey, Angela. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple of questions about the film. Um, oh, sure. One is, uh, are there any profits from the film uh, when showing it or purchasing it? Do they go to a nonprofit? And then the second question is, do you have plans to show it again, maybe in like a virtual setting? Um, uh, so just those, those are the two. Um, uh, yeah, so the Jetty Rock Foundation was our executive producer and uh, they sponsored the film. And they also um, are a, a major partner. You see the Jetty Rock Foundation on the bottom of this slide. So our follow the shell program uh, Jetty Rock Foundation, um, you know, works on that. So it's very minimal. I mean, the film isn't expensive. Um, so any any proceeds that would go through Jetty Rock Foundation go into the Follow the Shell program. But it's not like a, the whole shebang. Gotcha. Um, some people have done fundraisers specifically for that. Um, and it's a great idea. I think it is probably time. Uh, Kareen Ruff is the uh, brain and visionary and director um, of the film and a dear friend of mine. And her original uh, you know, thought was a five-year kind of update after the 2017 to see, hey, where is everybody now? Because um, that's a, a real interesting story in and of itself. So um, we haven't screened it in a while, but it would be really cool. And if anybody has some you know, fun way to do a virtual screening, um, um, I'm all up for it because I'll tell you, I'm watching it now. It almost looks like it's like an old cult film. It's like, oh my God, I can't, it's only been how many years? And look, it's like, I can't believe how different everything is. But um, yeah, but thanks for those questions. All right, great. Thank you. Um, I don't see anything else for right now. So I'll okay. let you move on. Okay, great. Um, so when you think about that, we're done with the film, it's out there. Um, we have the pilot project that was started, um, you know, with Stockton and Literal Society and that. It, to, to grow shell collection, it doesn't sound, it sounds easy, right? We're just going to go collect shell and, and, you know, what, you know, 
but it's like you really have to like any business operation you have to have a business plan or a, an operational plan like what are we doing how are we doing this what are the biggest problems in collecting shell obviously it's funding you know storing where are we going to where do you store it uh because originally it was being stored uh, at, down at stockton's marine field station um and uh one of the uh dave uh ambrose that worked there was just putting them in his pickup truck from old causeway and driving them down there not sustainable but hey let's just see if we got something here so transportation um and that curing lo location um and deployment methods uh, like where 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 are they where are they ending up um and and we need government support because this is an investment um in our communities and our local economies and we want to see more extensive partnerships in this and then a lot of the other models around um the country um there's nonprofits, there's there's state so there was a lot of different models so we were like okay so we have some partners jetty rock foundation is part of jetty which is a sort of a lifestyle company here in manahawkin um, they're a they're a brand um, and uh, sort of you know a, sort of at a surfing apparel and really growing in they're they've become a B Corp and really getting into social reinvestments with their Jetty Rock Foundation into sustainability uh, types of things. So they're sort of the brander. They brand. They created the oyster recycling program logo. You see the buckets and the basket, which we can talk a little bit about the successes and failures of those collection techniques. Um, so we started kind of laying it out who who should be involved in this and and you know uh how can we solve some of the problems that are arising um so mayor mancini really kind of abruptly was just like okay well let's we'll we'll contribute a truck and um staff and we'll 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 collect shell and we want it to continue supporting the tucker and research reef project and um, that kind of local leadership is the model that I would like to see other, um, you know, uh, if not municipalities, counties and state to show um, a local guy that is the mayor um, of one of the, the biggest coastal town, you know, obviously on Long Beach Island and, you know, investing in that. So um, this was, we really shined this baby up. This truck was in pretty bad shape, um, you know, but uh, enough black spray paint and some epoxy, and then Jetty created the model, and you know um, they we had the green uh, fish baskets and then the metal uh, buckets that were like okay, um, this is a good start. Let's let's go with the friends that we know that have oyster bars and things like that, and say you know we want we want to see this. Um, become successful. We don't want this to fail. So it was like you know we handpicked. Uh, a couple of the raw bars and just said, let's, let's get this model going and uh, things like that. And just sort of on there, you can see we started in 2017 and we just recently won um, the uh, uh, DEP Recycling Excellence Award for leadership for the shell recycling program. So we're very proud of that because now we can say it's an award-winning program. Um, we just won that last month and that was very exciting. But we really curated this because I said success is the key on this. We're not, we have got to go in incremental small steps here. And so that's my buddy, Joe Mangino. He is, if you don't know Joe Mangino, you just have to Google him. He's just an all around great guy. We did go to college together. Um, he does work at Jetty now um, doing all of their outreach and events, but he is just the face of community giving and um, just a, 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 a chronic giver backer. And I said, he's got to be our shell collection guy. And of course, happy every day with a smile to do anything that is for benefit to the community. Um, and he became the first municipal uh, shell recycling specialist, I think that ever existed in the history of New Jersey or since or then. Um, but so we, we started small with friends we knew, and now we've collected over 6,500 bushels from 14 area restaurants. Uh, mostly on Long Beach Island, and there's um, four uh, in Manahawkin now that we've um, partnership partnered with. So that truck that you're looking at, that could, at max, those bushels, it can hold, if you do Jenga right or whatever, about 55 to 60 bushels. So at the time, we were sharing it with our, our um, scrap metal and white goods. So there was a lot of uh, back and forth. So we were kind of limited um, by the end of, uh, you know, 20, um, I don't even know what year, 2019, I'll say, 
um, we were pretty maxed out and we're like, you know, a lot of other restaurants were saying, you know, we want to participate. So we're like, all right, we need to uh, expand the model moving into 2020 and 2021. So we know what happened. So now we're saying we need to expand the model going into 2021, 2022, because um, we see people are getting excited about it. Um, where we were kind of falling off, which makes me sad because this was my, the main thing is connecting people to their food, right? Like how simple would it be? Of course, you'll go out with friends, you'll go to the restaurant, we'll put a bucket there, and you'll just put your shell right in that bucket, right? How hard could it be? So the, I'm sure happily the wait staff will, uh, you know, will take it and just put it right into the bucket. It completely didn't work that way. That just became the dump bucket. And now these are sort of like keepsake little buckets um, you know, to try to connect people to the food, you know, that we're doing. So, but we, we refine it each time we talk about it in our, on our partners and say, okay, let's get an agreement with the restaurants and say, you're going to train your staff and we're going to provide signage. Um, we're going to, Jetty creates, uh, you know, t-shirts and things like that. We'll make sure all the staff has those t-shirts and all the swag and everything like that. Um, so just train the, the employees on talking about where all the, look at this beautiful menu of local oysters and things like that. Um, and, and you know, we wanna have events there and we want people to follow us on social media. So engaging the consumer is, has not been as easy as we thought it would be. And we're always open to suggestions. We have some great ideas um, for the coming season, depending on how everything goes. Um, but even over this past summer with the pandemic, um, we had five of our restaurants uh, consistently every week putting shell out. So we were happy if it was a half a bushel. So we were able to, you know, get a, a couple hundred bushels over the summer and still try to keep it present. We've had a lot of demand for that original slide I showed for that drop off. Um, again, it's not as simple as it seems because we're like, okay, uh, the takeout model is here to stay for probably a little while. Uh, the shucking at home and Barnegat Oyster Collective delivers their party packs. Um, teaching people how to shuck online, and then you have your party pack there with your friends. Um, we just have to make sure we do that right. So we have to kind of pump the brakes and say, how can we do a nice drop-off model that will be, um, you know, secure and not, you know, not smelly, and you know, um, and still get the job done to get the shell to Dale and to uh, Stockton. So um, this is just some of the. Um, information we've tried posters and table toppers and um, links for that that jetty uh, started designing um, so trying to make it as user friendly as possible not too sciencey but pretty basic uh, outreach stuff um, follow the shell is our our hashtag and everything like that so follow if you go to follow the shell.com it pretty much will take you to the jetty website and kind of dive into it a little bit more um, so where does it go? We finally get all this shell off of the island and um, we take it to Parsons, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with on Green Street. Um, he is, he was like, definitely bring it here. And it's, it's the first in many steps that he takes through his uh, mariculture uh, operation uh, that he works very closely with Stockton University um, on doing. So curing is just means kind of sitting there for a while and they say about six months, although I really haven't found a specific piece of legislation that says six months, but you want to just make sure that, you know, if the shell is from out of area, um, it doesn't have any algaes or anything growing on it. We don't want to kind of reinvent any of the uh, infectious problems we had back in the old days that were the demise of, of oyster with the dermo and the MSX and anything, anything that could come into the system. So just letting it hang out dry, nice dried out, beautiful shell. I mean, this fat will just kind of adhere to it like magic. So uh, right along, if you go down Tuckerton Creek and you're heading to um, the seaport, I'm sure you see this pile and I'm sure it's part of your creek tour of <laughs> all, you know, um, but maybe now whoever's giving that creek tour can maybe add a little more of this information and look for the follow the shell and the restaurants that are recycling shell, maybe we can get connected on that, you know, offline uh, would be super. So um, Dale, of course, and Steve Everett from Stockton. Um, so once that's all cured up, uh, it's bagged and then they set them in, in uh, these huge tanks. Uh, Dale's mariculture operation is down in Great Bay Marina, it's sort of uh, in Little Egg Harbor out there towards, uh, I guess, Graveling Point it might be. So, um, so he kind of transfers it after he uh, bags them up. 
again, the original study that they were doing was originally funded with um, from the Barnegat Bay Partnership. So a lot of the study continues to be funded by that. Um, so spat on shell, when we say that, this is a, you know, a picture I lift, you know, from Stockton and anybody that uses it, this is what spat on shell is. You see all the little growth of the oysters on the oyster shell. So that's a real nice picture to just show. We were joking, we're like, we just got to give spat a chance and it will take off because that's also one of the other things, um, you know, you can put as much substrate as you want in the system, but if the system isn't ready to accept that, that it's healthy enough and say this, this we're ready to, to get this uh, species and this whole kind of ecosystem happening again. So the Barnegat Bay Little Egg Harbor system has told us it's ready. So this is successful because of like decades of work ahead of this time that we're in of dedicated educators, scientists, everything to, to kind of get the system healthy enough for this resurgence of this particular species. So it's a, it's a true uh, cautious, but success story incrementally that we can put substrate in there. And more and more people are calling me or I'm out in the boat with my family. You just see wild oyster, you know, adhering to all sorts of things now. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, this material out in the bay. This is sort of, um, if you see that's sort where of if you want to follow Parsons uh, on Instagram, you can see how he just drops that into these tanks of like big hot tubs down there. And then that's how they get, uh, you know, kind of float the spat naturally where the, you know, the larvae gets the larvae in the water there. It's, you know, Dale and Christine Thompson, who I'll talk a little bit about too, they can really talk to you about sort of the science and the numbers and, and how much larvae they put in and maybe one shell, you know, uh, you know, you know, can be 600 oysters, who knows? So there's a lot, there's a one bushel, I think could be 600 oysters. So one bushel of shell could kind of contribute to 600 oysters, but they're really the pros at that sort of end of it. Beautiful operation. And I believe one of the last things when I talked to Dale, I think he just added a couple of more tanks too. So he's really expanding and, and it's a, a nice story. Um, so I think it's a four acre lease and I think they've maybe shelled about uh, half of an acre. Again, they, they would be able to do that, but just to sh kind of show you where the Tuckerton Research Reef is. So you can sort of see its location there and it's adjacent just a little bit to the north is where um, Rose Cove Oyster Farm is. And then just to the south, Dale's got a lot of his uh, clam beds there. And this is gonna eventually lead us over to show you what's exciting coming up for um, you know, Long Beach Township in, uh, you know, in the next part of my talk. Um, so once it's, they come out of this tank and they're all this spat on shell is existing. You can see the barge. This just was recently, I was so excited to go out and do real time, uh, you know, learning of, you know, they were doing live face sets and the top left uh, is Dr. Christine Thompson and she and her students do a lot of the research on the, the reef itself and sampling. And uh, that's Dale and his crew in the back spraying over the shell on, onto, the, onto the reef. They have a research buoy there where they're doing water monitor, you know, uh, monitoring. Um, so it's a, it's a real exciting, you know, uh, multi-step process here on uh, connecting that. Like, it, and again, the, the science is, Christine has wonderful presentations and many of you know her and I highly suggest following her um, information there at uh, Stockton um, uh, Shellfish uh, Lab and um, on Instagram and she's Christine Thompson at Stockton.edu. So um, really great real-time stuff happening out there right in our backyard again. So how we connect this science stuff to people just sitting here to saying like, hey, what do you want to have for dinner? That's, that's, that's where a lot of us can kind of take a nice role and kind of start talking the talk and walking the walk. You know, it's my privilege. I get to do this every day and talk about it. And um, I, want, I want, you know, everybody that lives here to be able to talk about it as, as well. Um, Again, the numbers, this, you know, I would really recommend Dale and Christine on there um, to, to talk about it, but there's just um, a wonderful group of scientists. And um, in the background there, you can see uh, uh, Jetty came out and was doing some videoing because they try to do a lot of the outreach to, to their base. And um, 
you know, they're, they're apparel brand. They're, they started carrying uh, Oystex, which is an oyster shell and recycled plastic um, fabric uh, for clothing. Um, you know, really kind of getting the brand out there, getting Follow the Shell out there. So we had all, everybody was sort of out on the water that day and it was very exciting. And, um, you know, despite the, the pandemic, this has been such a kernel of, of hope, uh, you know, for, for us all. So um, we do fundraisers we, I, and these are some of the bigger ones that Jetty and Jetty Rock uh, sponsors. Um, uh, Spice It Up is a, a, a spice shop in um, Beach Haven and they co-created Hop Sauce with Jetty in uh, back, oh gosh, it was before then, uh, Crab and for a Cause, which is at Mud City Crab House, and then the uh, Oyster Celebration, Long Beach Township Oyster Celebration. So these are just some of the events that contribute to Follow the Shell and that go back into helping us. We're trying to buy a new truck. So we have our own truck that um, we can just take at, you know, be mobile education. We can do more frequent pickups so then we can increase the number of restaurants. So we kind of have a small capital campaign um, for a uh, truck. We weren't able to do our events this year, but we do have information if you go to follow the shell for texting and fundraising and things like that, because um, without the, the truck really is the linchpin. <laughs> you can't pick up the uh, shell that we, we, you know, we're really not connecting the people. Um, Dale buys shell from other sources and, and you know, um, so they can get the volume that they need. But the piece that I work on is so important for people saying, I can buy food that just was grown in my bay and I'm going to eat it. And that shell's going to go right back into that spot. And it's going to help create uh, better things. So to me, that's magic. Um, so we can pause a little bit. I just want to give an aerial perspective on where everything is. You can see where the Tuckerton uh, Research Reef is. And I showed, you know, 40 North is just sort of the uh, north, Tucker's Island, a little south, Laughing Gull, Parsons Clam Beds, um, Seven Bridges, Flood Points once we get into the Great Bay, and then the Maxwells, of course, are, are up there. Just a small sl slammering. There's many more things happening. But uh, if you look onto Long Beach Island, you see Clam Cove Reserve, and then you see the LBT Field Station on Osborne Avenue in Holgate. Um, the second part of what I'll talk about is the, uh, the field station. Clam Cove Reserve, I just want people to know, is a 22-acre uh, parcel. Long Beach Township just acquired in partnership with the Ocean County Natural Land Trust. It was considered sort of that washover area after Sandy when the storm came through and kind of pushed the um, dune sand over onto the wetlands. And then the people were thinking it was buildable and it was, had been a big bone of contention that again, Mayor Mancini was like, all right, let's, let's do this. So we nominated Long Beach Township to the Ocean County Natural Land Trust. And we were able to do a cost share with the township being majority uh, owner and um, was great to partner with the county. We had not uh, seen that size of a parcel, um, you know, sh you know, funded through that natural land trust. So the county was excited to partner with us. So that's just to um, the south of our field station. And it's a beautiful parcel and uh, was kayaking around there the other day. So it's a nice uh, view of the future of the field station and the reserve there. So I don't know, Caitlin, if anybody has any questions before I talk about the field station, if anybody has questions about um, shell or any of that kind of stuff before I move on. We do have a few questions um, that I just wanted to also be mindful of the time. So do you want to take a, a few now and then um, save the rest for afterwards? That's up to you. We have like, you know, like five or six slides. I just want to introduce okay. people a short vision of the field station. Uh, and then I just have some, you know, contact information one. So I just want to, I'll show a few pictures of that after, but if there's some questions on specifically on sure. what I just talked about, that's fine. Okay, so we do have a few that are about the shell program. Um, do you guys offer shell drop off to customers that are purchasing their shells, their oysters slash shells and eating them at home? That is a goal. That is something we're working out. Um, I've talked with um, a couple of the fish markets, um, how we could have something securely there, maybe just out at certain times so the people that they're selling to can bring it back. So it's not out there to be like a garbage dump uh, type of thing. So we are we are in conversations right now and what vessel would that look like? Which should that be one of those big uh, flip top, you know, 70 gallon, you know, roll off, like what, what should it be? 
and what would be manageable for one of the markets uh, or restaurants, you know, that would feel comfortable with that. Township also, we were looking at our um, drop-off, uh, recycling drop-off center as a potential, but again, we do worry because we do get lots of crazy things dropped off um, at our drop-off center. <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, especially now, it's really crowded around here. So we, we really are seeing some things um, that shouldn't be there. So. Um, we want to do it right. Again, we don't want to be like, okay, we tried it and then we got a million complaints. I've talked to the Long Beach Island Health Department. And um, so we're getting there. So yeah, I, that's, that's a, that seems to be like, we'll at least have a couple available, maybe one on the mainland and maybe two on the island um, for the coming season. Very cool. And then along that same vein, have you thought about expanding to curbside homeowner shell pickup? No. <laughs> no. Um, uh, they can't even figure out which kind of plastic to recycle most of the time. So um, it's fine because it's complicated. You know, there is a lot of plastics. Um, no, I, I think if we can get it from the restaurants and give the consumer an opportunity for some drop off spots, um, I, I think we'll be in good shape. I don't I don't think curbside uh, is feasible. Um, and um, but, you know, I'll never say never to anything, because if we can prove something works well, I, I'm willing to, to give it a shot on a small scale to see if it can grow, but I, I don't want to mess with the health department and I don't want to mess with the solid waste rules. One of the mm -hmm. reasons we have a restaurant agreement um, is because we are taking this material from the restaurant. It's an, our agreement with them. That's their material. It's their product. They bought it, right? And once it goes to the curb, it goes onto the municipal easement. So we, I can't pick up off of the municipal easement. So if I go into Surf City, I can't, I've got to go to the restaurant and get the bushels from, you know, that restaurant um, by their dumpster. If it was on the curb, I told my guy, I'm like, you got to leave it there. It's no longer the restaurant's um, property. So that's like solid waste flow stuff. So, um, so we have to be cognizant of that. And, and, and you know, uh, it's only happened one time where they had it at the curb and, um, yeah, so we just have to be careful with laws. Right. And as far as other collections, um, someone put in the chat, Christine said Parson, Parsons has a collection barrel at their entrance door. Yes. So that's yes. Christine. Mm -hmm. And then I know um, Maxwell right. Shellfish, if you buy shellfish from them, you can return your shells. You have to bring it back to them, but yes. they will accept your shell. Yes, yes. Parsons and Maxwell's definitely. Um, and the, their locations are a lot different than uh you know uh, you know we're pretty packed in here on the island so I, I, we have to be much more cognizant of neighbors here mm -hmm. on a 50 by you know 100 lot uh next to a you know two or three residentials so yeah they definitely do and that's right i do i do know that i'm going to be going down on friday to pick up my uh my weekly maxwell's goods um so <laughs> yeah um, but that's right yeah thanks for those reminders on those drop-offs but that that's the model and um again we just have to be cognizant of neighbors sure and then uh, one other thing before I let you go, are, any, are there any complaints of uh, the shell curing smell at Parsons? Are they spread down and then rotated? Uh, I've never heard Dale uh, have a problem and he's had shell there um, for a long time. So I would mm -hmm. imagine uh, he's probably, uh, he's got good neighbors and he knows his neighbors, I would imagine, but I would leave that for him to answer. Uh, yeah, and he mixes them up. He's got a he's got another kind of shell operation that he does with some of his other leases. So he's got he's got a couple shell piles going on there. He's got he's got it nailed down because he's been doing it for a long time. So yeah. Um, yeah, so the state of New Jersey is also doing some shell collection. They just started doing it over right behind Maxwell's and the Stockton Marine Field Station. There, they, they right right nearby, uh, right on the Nico Creek. The uh, those guys are picking up some shell from Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and and shelling the upper portions of the, the state-owned Mullica leases that they have because all these systems are connected so the state program is going to put their shell on on state leases but having that substrate in the upper parts of the Mullica is completely connected to the stuff that we're doing uh, here and you have Maxwell's that have had their you know recurring um you know, generations of their, their oyster reefs there. So all of that's connected, but, but they, they're doing a, a, some, some also collection. I just wanted to mention that because I didn't put that in the, in the program uh, in, in Atlantic City. Yeah. 
Scott Stuber. So he and I did a, a program together a few months ago talking about our, our both of our programs. Okay, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that's uh, it for okay. now. So I'll let All you right. go. So I'll just quickly um, wrap up with what's exciting. So I just wanted to show this one aerial to kind of see everything is so closely uh, to, it's close together here uh, in this Little Egg Harbor uh, section. So the, the location of our field station is um, ideal. Um, so it's the Long Beach Township Marine Education Field Station and it will be opening in 2021. Um, that's a nice picture of it, beautiful. Um, when you see it from the bay, it's a waterfront parcel on uh, Osborne Avenue in our Holgate section of town. And um, we're really trying to uh, make it, um, it's a classroom and a lab space. So this is just a quick view, uh, see no sound panels. That's why we're not down there right now. <laughs> There's a little echo chamber. Um, classroom and lab space, it's a waterfront facility kind of, you know, with a high tech core to it and that fisherman's feel, which is sort of the shell shack which the mayor likes kind of calling it. Um, you know, he wanted it to look a little more, a little more shacky than it does, but it has that kind of feel to it. And, but very high tech, we're a uh, very fluid space. It's a, it has a 65 person capacity for the classroom and event space upstairs and it's fully ADA compliant. And then it has a full, what will end up being sort of like a wet lab space uh, on the same footprint uh, underneath of the um, facility. Um, right across the street, we have a um, public access path there. Uh, we had a small little easement there so we can, um, you know, allow the community can do kayak uh, and, and stand up, uh, drop off there, and it goes right into the Clam Cove Reserve. And you can see if you kind of look down at the other picture, that's a nice little pocket marsh um, to the, uh, not to the north really, but um, you know, we own technically, because it was supposed to be the, uh, the finishing of West Avenue through there. So we technically own two or three of those lots, but it's a nice little pocket marsh for any studying uh, that would need to be done on, on that. And the community that lives in that area was very appreciative of us sort of giving back this nice little public access path there. Uh, Cause there is, if you look up and down, there's nowhere for people to drop off their kayaks or stand up paddle boards um, in, that, in that neighborhood. So um, nice picture of it. So it's 127 West Osborne Avenue in Holgate. Um, we really wanted it to sort of be an anchor for everything uh, about the region's heritage and our maritime culture. Um, but, it, you know, it's also a place for celebration. Like it's a beautiful, has beautiful porches. Um, we want it to have something for everybody. It will be very sciencey and education. We'll use it for in-house trainings. But ultimately down the road, we, we would like it used for, you know, uh, community, you know, uh, expansion in, in any way and celebration of businesses and, and whatever it is. So it's, it's right now a very fluid space. Um, we also own a motel in the Brant, uh, Beach Haven Crest section of town, Pihala Park. So ultimately down the road, we'll, we've been looking at JC Nair as a model and say, if we wanted to have sort of a, a stay and study or something like that, kind of connect something where you could have something here, or you could do studies here, and then we have that um, motel right up the road. So um, that would be kind of it. So uh, again, it's uh, longbeachtownship.com and we're uh, Follow the Shell or Jetty Life. Um, coming soon will be a new truck. That's a beautiful picture of our old truck. Like I, did, I didn't mention that the truck conked out. So uh, that's why we're doing the capital campaign for the new truck. Um, but you can go and you can get some, uh, you know, they're Jetty Rock and Jetty has some t-shirts and things like that. And there is a, a way to donate to the Shell program and the Oyster Farmers film, uh, if you follow us. Um, and uh, really like the suggestion of maybe having um, another screening of that sometime soon. But that's it. So we really um, appreciate you guys having me and um, look forward to seeing you guys uh, down at the Shell Shack when we actually can have people there. <laughs> so that's it. That's all awesome. I have. Thank you so much, Angela. We'll give you a, a virtual round of applause. That was great. Okay. Such good info. Okay. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> I like know. Using, I don't know. I like using the little hands up at the top of my, <laughs> my screen there. Um, so I will open it up to any other questions. You can put them in the chat or you can take yourself off mute and ask Angela. And I believe I saw something that um, 
I believe Christine Thompson is also on um, answer and some of those tech technical science questions as well, if you have any specific questions about oysters. So um, thanks, Christine, for coming on today, too. So thanks, I'll kind of open the floor for anybody who has uh, additional questions. Um, I have a question. Can okay. you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, oh I just wanted to know, um, to get that um, field station going, how long has that been in the making? How, and like, what did it cost you to do something like that? You don't have to tell me the numbers, but I'm no. just like, yeah. how long and um, all, how did you get it done? Uh, there's a really great story in, I don't know if you guys ever pick up Bay Magazine. Um, there's a nice little story they did about sort of, you know, how this this came to be but the long story short was um you know uh the mayor just had a vision he just you know it was like one day in 20 gosh i think it was 2016 maybe mm. um because we did a pilot project there in 2017 so he's like you know Ange, what do you think about doing uh, some type of a field station down in holgate and uh i was just like okay, let's make it happen. You know, what's the vision? And he was, he said he was more like he wanted to see some kind of like fisherman's type college cottage that was uh, high tech, uh, you know, to really start looking, you know, uh, looking at the science and all the, the, you know, restoration of stuff that's happening uh, in the Bay. So that was sort of us just uh, brainstorming together and then um, seeing what his vision was. And um, it is coupled with uh, right after Sandy, we passed our uh, local um, open space tax, if you will, um, mm -hmm. right after Sandy. So a goal of the municipality has been um, to do sort of like a, a parcel a year or really when, when Sandy kind of ravaged us, we saw that our public access points got destroyed and um, we wanted to make sure we had more public access to um, our bays and, and oceans and making them resilient. So that became a priority. So looking at waterfront parcels that we could acquire through that process or, you know, and in partnership with other owners um, became a, a big uh, priority for us. So, so we have Hideaway Bay up in the Beach Haven Garden section. Um, so it goes with a bigger model of increasing public access to uh, the Barnegat Bay Little Lake Harbor system. We want to do a water trail ultimately connecting all of the parcels that we've been acquiring. Mm -hmm and ones that we have been really uh, amping up to make them much more resilient um, to storms. So it, it kind of is a, a combination of those two things. Great, wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So one question in the chat, um, what are your plans, Angela, for 2021? Are you expanding shell collection? Um, once restaurants are open, hopefully. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so we're, we are, um, right now we're just down to, uh, you know, uh, maybe only three or four restaurants that are open right now uh, and able to, because once they did the outside tents and bars and stuff and the, where the dumpsters were, you know, so some of them that wanted to, just it wasn't happening. Um, we're re-engaging, we're rebooting and, um, seeing what works we're going to offer up that drop-off model uh, once we can get a new truck we'll be able to be a little bit more frequent and fluid with our pickups because we don't have to share the truck with you know uh you know scrap metal and <laughs> white goods it'll be exclusively for the program so then that will that will free us up to be a more accommodating uh there's plenty of shell left out there in so many restaurants and raw bars in our region and we know that and uh, we would like to see more more partnerships so that we can get every shell that we can get. You know, we can we can estimate how much shell we could actually get if you just go to like uh, Dale knows exactly how much he sells in say Ocean County or even on Long Beach Island, whatever it is. Barnegat Oyster Collective can say we sell this is how many animals we we have we have given to this many restaurants. We can we can actually quantify how many bushels of shell we could potentially recover, and that's not even including uh, out of area. Uh, oysters and clams. So um, we can start to gauge that number and get some, you get say, okay, so we could really potentially end up with, you know, 
10,000 bushels. So, so how can we accommodate that with a truck that can pick up 60 at a time? All right, is there anybody else? Someone asked to, if you could post your email contact again, maybe in the chat, Angela. Um, and then I can also post a link to that um, trailer for the Oyster Farmer video. Yeah, I, I sent you the Vimeo. Yep, okay, so I just put it up. You guys can check that out. Um, on the first slide. Yeah, just so just a reminder that it's Anderson, a N D E R S E N. A lot of people go with S O N. So. Like me. We first advertise S O N. I was like, oh no. It yeah, happens all the time. It's like, I've emailed you. You've never emailed me back. I'm like, I like will not ever, never not email you back. So <laughs> A N D E R S E N at longbeachtownship.com is how to get in touch with me. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, okay. This was such a great. Um, successful model, I think, for a sustainability program. I think it's it's so impressive, Angela. So um, excellent work and thank you. Um, hope all is well, you know, with you guys and with the oyster farmers, you know, during COVID too. So I hope they're doing okay as well. Yep. Everybody's um, uh, a day at a time. Yeah, <laughs> yep. We want to thank you, Angela. What a great beginning to lunch and learn. And uh, there's so much to do together. Wow. Definitely. Yep. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. It's nice to see all your faces, uh, the ones that I can see. So thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's a nice way to start the year. Absolutely. We agree. So right. thank you everybody for tuning in today. And again, I'll stop this recording, post it on our YouTube if you want to share it out or rewatch it. All right. Okay. So thank you so much. All right. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody.